Welcome everyone to the Super Size Phys Ed Podcast. I'm your host, Dave Carney, and I teach PE in Fort Myers, Florida, kindergarten through fifth grade, large groups, usually over 100, somewhere between 100 and 130-ish. So glad to have you here. Today, we are doing our Five Boomer Friday, and that is when I list five things, cool things I've seen, or uh, different apps, different you know, documentaries, just some different cool stuff that I've come across that I want to share. So today I want to talk about my top five invasion games. So here we go. All right. So my first boomer, I call it my first thing I kind of talk about and do a little transition thing like this although it sounds a little louder in a moment. My first one uh, for invasion games. Now, I, I didn't want to just give you, you know, soccer and football. And if you're not sure what invasion games are, um, it's part of the TGFU model, Teaching Games for Understanding, where they lump games with, with similar strategies together. And I never knew that when I was a kid. You know, I was good at lots of sports, but I never really thought about the strategies that – you know, go with soccer, also go with hockey. Now, it looks different, but there's many of the same strategies and, and skills involved. So my first one is crossover. And crossover, I've said it before, I first saw on Joey Fyth's website, thephysicaleducator.com. So it's it's great for large groups because I, we play crossover with either two or three classes. Now, I'm sure you can play with one, but honestly, the bigger the better. Um, not too big, but... You know, 50 kids, students is, is about right, 25 on 25. Again, we've gone higher than that even, something like uh, maybe 40 on 40 is, is pretty high, but 35, 30, something like that on, you know, against the same amount. And the goal is to get their whole team across. Now, we use flag belts. We've done it before with noodles, you know, and just regular tagging. Uh, flag belts are a good thing to have. Um, the kids learn lots of different uh, moves and we work on finding open space and, and we talk a lot of strategy in those games. So crossover is a great game and there's many variations to it. We add, we've we added to it. I um, had a recent podcast called Save the World where the students had to come down and knock pins over and then get their team across. There's also just tennis ball crossover where we, they, we had to bring just tennis balls across as points. Um, I did a recent one on Hunger Games. That's another crossover variation. And then, and that's a podcast I put out. And then Capture Flag, which I also put out, just the variations we do here. Now, people do Capture Flag in different ways. But um, Crossover is the kind of the basic idea of, of all these variations. And it's just the basic form of it. So I love Crossover. That's my first one. All right, number two. I'm going to give you a modified invasion game that I got from Seth Martin. Um, he's he's just fantastic resource. He is a fantastic resource of TGFU. So if you want to check him out, that is definitely the way to go. He came up, or he I heard it from him, an idea called Three Object Crossover, where the students had to, and we're actually doing this right now with fourth and fifth grade, and actually third grade. We, we're trying with third grade, where the students have to, uh, they have three objects, and it's like a fish, a deck ring, and a ball, or something like that. It, but it can be mixed up too. It can be a beanbag. Um, frisbees, any kind of objects, and they get three, and they have to get them across the field with their team by passing, and they can't move with the ball or object. They they can't take any steps, and then if it falls to the ground, they have to go all the way back. So they have to learn how to move it across, use you know proper communication and technique, and just work together. Everybody, everybody gets a chance to play. Everybody gets a, a, a chance to catch it and throw it and and then eventually we had defense to it. So it, there's def- different levels of it, and the kids really enjoy it. So my second one is Three Object Crossover, and that will be on my website, by the way. Three Object Crossover. I have a video of it. So that's number two. All right, number three is Ultimate. Anything Ultimate. The original Ultimate would be probably to use a ball, just like a gator skin ball, and then go on, going on to Ultimate Frisbee. That's a little hard, though, for our students um, to throw and catch Frisbees, but that's definitely a way to go. You have ultimate football. Um, we've even done ultimate fish ball, where you have a big old fish um, blown up, and they have to get it across, and if it falls to the ground, the other team gets it from there, and they have to move it towards their the opponent's um, goal or end line. 
So ultimate, any kind of ultimate is awesome. And again, the, the many forms, many variations make it very strategic and the kids learn um, just again, how to cooperate, how to communicate and just work really well together. And it's a non-contact sport, so it's a great thing. That's number three, ultimate. Okay, number four, I have to say Chukball because Chukball is one of my favorite games that we started playing a few years ago. Um, fifth grade, we, we teach it to third, fourth, and fifth. And third grade really struggles at first. If you don't know what Chukball is, um, I can also link up a video of our final Chukball game, one of our final games in, in our cafeteria. Uh, we turn that into a big old stadium. It's awesome during our fifth grade sport ed unit, which we start after Christmas every year. So that'll be we'll be gearing up to start that soon. And in Chukball, the teams throw, they work they're the ball down usually like a gator skin ball there are official chook balls which we, we do have one they work it down the field or down the court and they throw it at the at a rebounder and the other team has to catch it and if they don't it's a point and there it's a non-contact sport there's no defense so they again they have to work together the teams and they have, we have to get in position and everybody touches the ball everybody's involved there, again i've said the word communication a lot but this this is definitely a communication game and during a sport ed unit all our students get a, a job, and just it's just a fantastic thing. It doesn't have to be a sport ed unit, but Chukball is a great game, so that is number four. All right, your final boom, boomer is Sharks and Minnows. Now, it sounds like a game that's been around a long time, which it has, and but it's it's just it's a good game. It's a good game to teach the younger students how to move across the field, how to tag, how to um, just build on the levels. And it also works for even fourth and fifth grade. It works all the way up because it's a great lead up game for other invasion games. And it's, it's just great getting them to see the open space. It's very strategic, like I said, and it gets them talking about, well, you know, how can you fake out your defender? You know, what do you look for when you're moving? And the students that are taggers, they eventually get to stand up and they can kind of take one step or they can shift a little bit and that's up to you and sometimes it doesn't work because some kids start to run around and they don't they don't listen but for the most part sharks and minnows is a great lead-up game for other invasion games and it's a great way to start along with crossover so i'm going to definitely go with sharks and minnows as number five all right there you have it everybody my five Top five invasion games. Again, I didn't want to just put down soccer and hockey and stuff like that because those are great games, but I want to share some other games we play here at PE in Fort Myers at my school. And there's some great videos that I want to share with you. They're not great because it's me. They're great because my kids did them or they led them. So I'm going to share some on my website at supersizephyzed.com. Take care. You guys are awesome. Have a great weekend.